too long, bro. What's good? Another day? Sure, no sounds good. Genesis 31. Let's get to it. Wow. Well, Last week. Yep. Uh, Genesis chapter 31, starting at verse 1. And he heard the words of Laban's son, saying, Jacob has taken away all that was our father's. And of that which was our father's has he gotten all his this glory. And Jacob beheld the countenance of Laban, and behold, it was it was not toward him as before. Verse 3. And the Lord said unto Jacob, Return unto the land of thy fathers and to thy kindred, and I will be with thee. Now right here, that's deep. I never really caught that, but Jacob observing what, you know, LeBron's sons are saying, you know, they're saying some words that, you know, have someone think, well, hold on, man. I might get hemmed up here, you know. And um, he's beholding the confidence of LeBron, meaning his mannerisms, the way he's treating them. You know, he's acting kind of different. And then he says, the Lord said unto Jacob, return unto thy land at verse 3, right? So it's just like, I wonder if this makes me think that the, that Jacob seen this and he went and prayed to the Most High. Like, what should I do? Can you fix this? Can you change this? He went and he felt the Most High, and the an answer came back. I just wonder, especially because you be at, you know, we talked about this before, like with Abraham, Sarah, Hagar. Did Abraham go and pray about this situation, or did he just go into Hagar at, at his wife's counsel? You know what I mean? Yeah, he definitely prayed, bro. He definitely prayed. He yeah. had to. Uh, uh, verse 4. Verse 4. And Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah to the field unto the flock, and said unto them, I see your father's countenance, that it is not toward me as before, but the God of my father has been with me. And you know that with all my power I have served your father. And your father has deceived me and changed my wages ten times. But the Most High suffered him not to hurt me. Verse 8. If he said thus, then the speckled shall be thy wages, then all the cattle bear it speckled. And if he said thus, the ring straight shall be thy hire, then bear all the cattle ring straight. Thus the Most High has taken away the cattle of your father and given them to me. And it came to pass at the time that the cattle conceived that I lifted up my eyes and saw in a dream, and behold, the rams which leaped upon the cattle were ring straight, speckled, and gristled. Hmm. And the angel of the Most High spake unto me in a dream, saying, Jacob. And I said, Here am I. And he said, Lift up now thy eyes and see all the rams which leaped upon the cattle, or ring streaked, hmm. speckled, and gristled. For I've seen all that Laban doeth unto thee. I am the God of hmm. Bethel, where thou anointest the pillar, and where thou vowedest vowed unto me. Mm. Now arise, get thee out from this land, and return unto the land of thy kindred. Mm. And Rachel and Leah answered and said unto him, in verse 14, Is there yet any portion of inheritance for us in our father's house? Are we not counted of him strangers? For he has sold us, and hath quite devoured also our money. Mm. For all the riches which the Most High has taken from our father, that is ours and our children. Now then, whatsoever the Most High has said unto thee, do. Wait, wait. Wait, mm-hmm. wait. So, <laughs> even Rachel is agreeing, and Leah is agreeing that, like, her father has been doing wrong by this. Uh, sounds like it. That's how I read it. Yeah, so, okay. <laughs> That's good to know. Because he basically saying, yeah, he deserved everything that's coming to him. Yeah. Oh. But the fact that it was ten times, you changed my wages ten times, but God did not allow him to hurt me. Uh-huh. <laughs> what? Uh-huh. Wow. Yep. It you sounds like when I read this it, loyalty, all that, huh? What it sounds like as I was reading, he said. Like, LeBron will come and be like, hey, every sheet that come out speckled is yours. And every mm-hmm. sheet that's perfect is mine. Because remember, this was, a, you know, the last night. 
verse 30, right? Chapter 30. Mm-hmm. So now it sounds like, okay, so he'll be like, okay, cool, no problem. And then every sheep after that comes out speckled. And he's like, what the hell? So now he's not getting nothing. So then <laughs> he comes, he's like, all right, you know what? It's been two weeks, every freaking sheep, or it's been however many months, years, uh, or weeks, um, every sheep is coming out speckled. So hold on. Every sheep that comes out uh, this way is yours, and every and the speckled ones are now mine. So the ring-streaked ones are yours, but speckled are mine. Oh, and wow. Can, you know, every That's sheep comes out ring-streaked. <laughs> oh, so God kept changing it. That's hilarious. <laughs> that's, that's hilarious, how I'm bro. It. I don't know if I'm understanding that correctly, but that's how I'm seeing it right now. So that's bro, how I'm seeing it. And but <laughs> it go with it go it go with what I'm saying or seeing because my thing is think about it in real life, bro. How many people have left jobs because things have changed? have done this, have done that, and never really looked at it as a perspective. Like, bro, if God's telling you to do something you can be, bro, he will get you through every wave, every storm, every change of a wage, every change of economy. Like, Man. you will never want. He will, He will. you know what I'm saying? At least I see that mm-hmm. in this, too. Bring that out. That's true. Yeah. That's true, bro. And, and the other thing is, and when we look at chapter 30 last night, it said that Jacob basically bring, bring it out that, you know, before I got here, you wasn't prospering like this with the cattle. And, and, and you know, mm-hmm. since I got here, the most high, you know, he came with me. And obviously now you're prospering, you know. And now that, you know, Jacob maybe's about to uh, depart, now it's like everything is going back to Jacob. Like he's receiving everything, and Laban is going back to his original state or going back to a lesser state. Because, you Which know, the way you have been, exactly. The way you've been acting, you know, you reap what you sow, man. So, you know. Now, one thing I also want said, to point out. He even said, oh, what are you saying? No, I was just going to no, say, no, he, go even ahead, said, uh-huh. he even said, as you're with me, I he literally told him, he said, Since I've been with you, you know that I have been blessing your house. Right. I'm doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing I was looking at is how Rachel Rachel and Leah, his wives, you know, his companions, they were ready to do whatever he was he want you know, what they they trusted whatever he was about to do. Like the book talks yeah. about the head of every man is Christ and you know, the head of Christ is God. And they like, hey, listen, you know, we hear what you're saying, even logically what you're saying. You know, our father has been doing us wrong. We we don't owe him no loyalty. He sold us. So we are now into you. You are a master. And whatever your master says to do, hey, do it. I'm mm-hmm. with it. They didn't come. They don't say that they came complaining like, hey, let's get up out of here. He called them to a meeting, told them what the deal is. And they, they just like, yeah, I feel you. Mm-hmm. Let's go. Whatever you say, mm-hmm. husband. No problem. Mm-hmm. And again, look, Rachel and Leah have been raised in this land. This is their father's house. That now they're ready to cleave to their husband and go wherever he say, let's go. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this is you. You got to change up, you know, how you've been living. You've been knowing this all your life. Now you're about to go to a new place. You know what I'm saying? But they're not too attached where they're willing to go with their husband. So that speaks to us too, like. Don't be too attached to things when it's time to move. When your master say move, just like that. So. Mhm. No, know. for real. Yeah. Wow. Now the other side of this is you can look at it like Rachel and Leah can also have. Uh, we don't want to have spite in our heart. Now they can have spite or be mad at their father, and they want vengeance on them. So they like, yeah, let's go. It's too. You know, you can look at it from so many different ways, but you know. I just wanted to point that out. All right, but anyways, verse 16. For all the riches the Most High has taken from our fathers, that is ours and our children's now. Then whatsoever the Most High said unto thee, do. Verse 17. Then Jacob rose up and set his sons and his wives upon camp. So now they have strengthened him with their they mouth, you know what I'm saying, with their encouragement. They wasn't trying to fight him on it. So now this would make one encouraged, you know what I mean? And it says a wicked woman, in the Bible, it says a wicked woman abate the courage, meaning she will make you not even be encouraged to do what the Most High told you to do or what you think is right to do. 
she mm-hmm. didn't get you. You know what I'm saying? But now he know rolled up because his wife like, yeah, let's do it. You're right. Whatever God told you to do, let's do it. Mm-hmm. You know, that's a testament right there, man. I'm afraid so much. Right. Damn, yeah, verse 18. When you do that. Mm-hmm. And he was like that. Because it's the thing, right. bro. Say it, man. If you're really trying to go after and listen to what this man God is saying, there's going to be, and let's say really, bro, I'm talking about past the holidays, past all the fake stuff that's in the world. Let's say, because dang near, by living directly by the Bible, bro, you're going to look like an alien, like a monk to these people. Oh, man. Right. So as soon as you oh, get man. with a woman and you're trying to take away holidays and that, like, let's think about this. You get with a woman in, and you, you marry someone in September. And Christmas coming up December. Mm. Mm. Every other relationship she ever had, they go over to her mama house for Christmas. Mm. And they have Jeez. all this and all this and for Thanksgiving, all this. And then you have a birthday and you're learning that. The, think about it. Mm. Just even that. Mm. It's harder for you to follow the things that you know God is doing right because you're like, what's she going to say? What's she gonna think? Right, right. Is she gonna understand it? Is she gonna, brother? What? So you want a right. woman who? It's not even about. Yeah, I want you to be as sold out as me. But let's really just be both sold out to this Bible. So when mm-hmm. we both hear and feel and see things that really don't make sense or that really suck, we can go in it together. Like you know what I'm saying, and join it together. Like if we both like, dang, like. We get married, all of a sudden we come to the faith and Christmas come up. we like, dang. Well, baby, we have plans to go see the lights and all this fleshly fun stuff. We can't go do it. Okay, let's do it together. Let it not be, you know what I'm saying, just the husband, like I'm trying to honor God. No, let's figure out, all right, baby, let's just see how we can honor God together. But no, you so worried. You think about it. They're going to be so worried about what they're missing. Oh, so we're not going to, what are we going to get the kids for Christmas? Like, hey, bro, it's going to be harder. You need a woman who is willing to go. That's right. Bring that out. That was a good bring out, buddy. Genesis 31, verse 18. And he carried away all his cattle and all his goods, which he had gotten, the cattle of his giddy, which he had gotten in Pandoram, for to go to Isaac, his father, in the land of Canaan. Going back to his pop's house. You heard? Verse 19. And Laban went to share his sheep, and Rachel had stolen the images that were her father. Hmm. And Jacob hmm. stole away on a, Jacob stole away unaware to Laban the Syrian, and that he told him not that he fled. So he fled with all that he had, and he rose up and passed over the river and set his face toward the Mount Gilead. And it was told Laban on the third day that Jacob was fled. And he took his brethren with him and pursued after him seven days journey. <laughs> and they overtook him in the Mount Gilead. And the Most High came to Laban, the Syrian, in a dream by night, and said unto him, Take heed that thou speak not to Jacob either good or bad. Verse 25. Then Laban overtook Jacob, that Jacob had pitched his tent in the mount, and Laban with his brethren pitched in the Mount of Gilead. And the man said to Jacob, What hast thou done that thou hast stolen away unawares to me and carried away my da- daughters ca- as captives taken with the sword? Wherefore did thou flee away secretly and steal away from me and did not tell me that I might have sent thee away with myrrh and with songs and with tablets and with a heart? So basically saying, I, I would have sent you away with a party, a going away party, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Verse 28. And has not suffered me to kiss my sons and my daughters. Thou hast now done foolishly in so doing. It is in the power of my hand to do you hurt. But the Most High, the God of your fathers, spake unto me yesterday night, saying, Take thou heed that thou speak not to Jacob, either good or bad. And now, so oh, thou would need be gone, because thou because thou sore longest after thy father's house. Yet wherefore hast thou stolen my God? What is he saying? What is he trying to say? Uh, I know he so didn't who, call the blessings that God been giving him because of Jacob. 
his gods. What are you talking about? No, 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 no. So he had gods, so like household gods. Like, you know, let's say somebody has a statue or a picture of Kobe in their house. You know what I'm saying? It's very important to them, so it's considered a god in this sense. Uh-huh. When you click on that Hebrew word, the idea is like household god. So okay. what happened is, what happened is, uh, Rachel stole away one of her dad's gods. So let's say he had some type of statue that when she was growing up, she really liked that thing. Now that um, uh, now that uh, she's leaving, she takes that thing. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So imagine some mural, some picture, whatever is a household item that is very important in someone's house. It could be a vase. It could be freaking anything. You know what I'm saying? It could be a, a, a decoration, sword, some type of decoration. It could be anything, you know? And Because, again, when we, take, when we take that word God, by definition what it is is in a, a high-ranking person, place, or thing. That's why money or even your belly can be called a God. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that's what you know. That's what it could be. It could be a safe. It could be, you know, anything, bro. Anything. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. So she she took this away, which you know, obviously she shouldn't have done, because it's not, it's not why, yours. That's, why is that's so? Idea. Why is there so uh-huh. much weirdness in this woman? <laughs> why is she always doing something weird? What do you mean? What did she do weird before? What did she do weird before, brother man? Man, the baby stuff was just weird. Not waiting on God to give her a baby was weird to me. Mm. There's these little things I've just sprinkled in weirdness. And maybe yeah. because I'm not able to characterize it as sin. So I'm trying to understand why she thinks this is okay. <laughs> Right. Because why? Because uh, well, this is still. It is for sure. She could have. She could have felt like it belonged to her. Remember, that's what I was bringing out also in that above verse about, you know, she could have been with her husband, you know, and her dad become an enemy because of what she seen him do, and because of spite or unforgiveness or hurt, or whatever. In spite, she take this because she knows it's a picture of her dad and she wants him to be hurt by it or uh, she feels she's selfish and she feels that this should belong to her anyway. He should have gave her this. Uh, he's always, you know, he always liked this. So you just take it away, you know what I'm saying, secretly just go with it. Or you still attach to him like, I'm taking this with me. This is mine. This belongs to me. You know what I mean? It's so many things, bro. She's. She's victim to the flesh as every other human is. Yeah, you have we have this on record of Rachel, but all the things we so called stupidly done, it's not necessarily mm-hmm. in a book for us to continue to read her over and over and over. But mm-hmm. just as she may have fell victim to this, come on, man. I done fell victim to stuff like this too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So now, I can see also In 14, she said, is there still any portion of inheritance for us in our father's house? Exactly, see? And so see? she could even be like, this was ours already, but I, yep. I'm i the one that's going to have the the sack to take it. No, I'm yep. not going to let Jacob, I'm not going to let Leah, nobody else because, like, imagine it's like, I got to take the whole house, but I know these are, like, four important things that this person does not want to leave. Like, I'm going to let, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to let her take it. Right. Right. I yep. can see that. Almost, too. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it could so, also be, you know, in, in that moment, she could have felt entitlement, like you said. She like, we didn't get no inheritance, and she felt like, for whatever reason, she should have had one. And, be, and because she didn't have one, she, you know, this should be mine. It's like, think about a, a child that, you know, your dad died or your, your parents died, and they have a wheel. And, you know, let's say your dad has this, this truck or this car, and, and you like, and in, in his will, he didn't leave it to you. He left it to somebody else. 
and you're like, man, he know I like that more than everybody else. Why would he give it to them? I mean, come on, bro. How many movies have people show, you know, got mad at a dead person because they didn't leave them what they wanted? You know what I mean? Like, right. <laughs> your whole grieving process go out the door because we're starting even, fighting even, even doing it. Man, even during the time of the Masha Christ, a man comes to Christ and he's like, hey, man, tell my brother to split the inheritance with me. And Christ's like, hey, man, be well covered to us, man. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that, that, that it, the sense of entitlement or whatever, anyone is can fall victim to it, you know? So yeah. I think that's what we have in this case, you know what I mean? Yeah, because she went away with that on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where you at? Yeah. Uh, you got to pick it up, but it's uh, uh, verse. Pick it up at verse thirty. All right, and now you have surely gone because you greatly longed for your father's house, but why did you steal my God? Then Jacob answered and said to Laban, because I was afraid. And for I said, perhaps you would take your daughters from me by force. With whomever you find your gods, do not let him live. In the presence of our bedroom, identify what I have of yours and take it with you. For Jacob did not know that Rachel had stolen them. And Laban went into Jacob's tent and into Leah's tent and into the two maids' tent, but he did not find them. Then he went out of Leah's tent and entered Rachel's tent. And now Rachel had taken the household idols, put them in the camel saddle, and sat on them. And Laban searched all about the tent, but did not find them. <laughs> uh, I don't like Rachel. <laughs> She's funny. <laughs> and she said to her father, Let it not displease my Lord that I cannot rise before you, for the man of women is with me. And he searched but did not find the household idol. Then Jacob was angry and rebuked Laban. And Jacob answered and said to Laban, what is my trespass? What is my sin that you have so hotly pursued me? You can't even find it. Hey, man, she's not doing good right here, bro. She's about to make them fight, bro, off of her lying. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, I I agree. This is This is not. This is not a right not, to think to do. Right. So, yeah, right. she has, she, she, this is not a right to think she's doing. I agree. She has number one, then honor your father. You had you, you chose other gods over the most high because anytime you break the commandment of the most high, you letting them know that, you know, you're not taking his counsel. You're taking your own counsel, so you also in like idolatry. You understand? You also are in uh, you're disrespecting your parents, which is the fifth commandment. And then you got um, you stole, which is the eighth commandment, and now you got a law, which is basically the ninth commandment. You see what I'm saying? So, what she's doing is definitely 100% not righteous. The way I read the book and, and the tenets that the Most High gives, she's definitely. And then on top of that, like I said, now she's about to bring. She could bring this could go really bad. You know what I'm saying? With her, with her husband and her dad. Yeah. So. And and bro. She took it and sat on it while he's searching yeah. for it. Right. Girl. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm-mm-mm. So then so it's that. It's also, huh? it also speaks to a woman, you know what I'm saying, making moves behind her husband's back that should not be made. You can yeah. damage the house of your husband by making these unauthorized, unapproved uh-huh. uh, maneuvers, man. You mm-hmm. understand what I'm saying? So this is where you also, you know, what we can take from this is be aligned with your husband and make sure he knows of the things that you're trying to do. Make sure you get authorization. See, and the thing is, a lot of women, they want to call their husbands kings, but with a king, things have to be approved first. Uh-huh. <laughs> Nothing moves in his kingdom without him knowing. That's, how, that's real kingship. So you know, if you want to, if you're looking at your husband as king, lord, and all this, 
go back to what it, go watch a movie or read some history books about how a king a kingdom is really ran. It's not ran with you just making unapproved what bro, when unapproved, unauthorized transactions get made under the king, usually that person dies, man. You know Always. And, and the best right, the best reference I have, the truest reference I have is the book of uh the book of uh not Susanna, um uh, who am I thinking about, man? Um Esther. The book of Esther. Uh, uh-huh. Real king, real queen. When Haman made these these unauthorized uh, transactions, even though he was the king's right hand man, the king had him killed, man. So, so bro, uh, something to really look who, at. Who can? What woman, bro? Like, I don't think I, I don't think I don't think there is one, bro. I don't think there is a woman that's really going that hard for that. Because this is the thing, I'm trying to go so hard for me and what it is to be a man and God. A woman, I don't know no woman really trying to go hard for that. Because you're going to think, think about it. If you read the real characteristics of that woman, bro, you're going to think she's crazy. That's everything against what you think is okay. Yeah. You're going to think she's absolute crazy. You're going to say, what? What? Um, for her to even say anything, she has to ask her husband? For her to this, yeah. for her to that, you're going to think it's so devilish. But it's order. Yeah. It's godly. Yeah. But yeah. you're going to think, bro, I'm telling you, but what woman who really, what woman out there is really like, I want to honor my husband just like he's God? What woman out there yeah. has put the wire in her head to say, when I talk to him, when anything happens, I'm speaking to him as if I'm speaking to my Lord? What yeah. woman? You feel me? There, I don't know. None. That's really taking it that serious. That is that that has made that their understanding of how they honor God, bro. None, mm-hmm. bro. Period. I'm sorry, right. bro. Solomon. Solomon said that out of uh, you know the righteous men, basically, he only found one out of a thousand. Out of women, out of a thousand, he said zero. And we know Solomon had the experience. He could. Have, he had intimate. Relationships of a thousand women. <laughs> so if anyone could have really took a poll, Solomon's that guy. <laughs> For sure. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, different nations, different <laughs> races. You know what I'm saying? All a thousand of them. Let me see which one's really for the most high. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So hey, listen, it, 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 the ring is already small now. You know, to any if there's any women listening. This is not saying you can't do it. This is saying go do it. You know, it's just your devotion has to go there. Same thing for men. Our, your de- our devotion has to be there to really love the Most High with all your mind. That means you, everything you think about is Him. Like, is He okay with this? That's why in Revelation you say His name, His character, is on their forehead. Mm. They're always thinking about Him. Mm. You know what I'm saying? He governs them. That's why I said Christ is the head of every man. What does that mean? That they're literally operating how Christ would. They have taken mm-hmm. all his counsel. They're looking at his mannerisms, his body language. How did he react when this happened? What did he say to do in this type of area? This They're taking their counsel and advice from Christ. And who Christ get it from? The Most High. That's why I say the Most High is the mind of Christ. It's the head of but Christ. What- Listen, a woman will be upset when you're too right about something, when you're always right, when it seems like you're all – like, is your husband supposed to be stupid? Is he supposed to be Do wrong? you think it's not possible for a person to always be able to righteously think of something and put things together? Is that if a bad if thing? He's in a, if he's in a Hamas, I'd be no way. This is what you would want. You should desire for your husband to always be right because the most high that. Don't want that, bro. the most high said that the man he appointed and anointed the man to what? To clean the woman with the washing of the word and to present her as Christ presents the church. So so it don't matter if you think a man don't he's not a woman because so he don't get it. The most high obviously thinks he gets it. Because he put the man in a position to clean the woman, and he's comparing it to Christ cleaning the church. Mm. 
Hey, man. I would, I, hey, whoever my master is, I would definitely want him to be right. Because if he's supposed to lead me and teach me and get me to the right place, I can't have him being wrong. <laughs> oh, man. I need hey. you to be right. Just, oh, like, just like I feel like Christ is right, I need Christ to be right. And guess what? The oh. witness of the, is that the most I pulled up to the scene and said, this is my, this is my son. I'm pleased with him. Hear ye Bruh. him. You know how much easier it is to just go to God, bro? Why oh, can't please. women see it that way? It's so much. Bro, if I know somebody's leading, that's why, bro, I don't say I wish I could be a woman, but I wish I rose <laughs> with at times. You feel me? If yeah, I just, I if I had a God on this earth that I could just go to for everything and, 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 and expect to lead me and hope and learn and, bro, what? And shield me from things? Why would I not mm-hmm. want to honor and ask you everything? Why would I not yeah. want to learn from your entire mind? It's crazy. But yet, if yeah. you meet a celebrity, if you meet your favorite singer, and so every word that comes out of his mouth is going to be so important to you. Right. If you go to school... Yeah. Every word that comes out of the teacher's mouth in there is so important to you. Your boss is important to you. But the person yep. you love, God is supposed to literally, literally, this is God now. Not no teacher, not no school license, not no this, not no that. This is God saying, I am going to, if I have a man that's going in my word and learning, I'm bestowing upon him this deed and this mission to wash yep. you in this world. Why not him? Yeah. Why would you not hear him? Why would you not listen to him? Why would 10 minutes of him speaking be worse than a teacher telling you what to do? Bro, there's something in there, bro, that is trying to disconnect you from who's trying to lead you. Why is it such a fight? I'm telling you, bro, it's crazy. Like, if women can see how strong they are and how much you get to benefit from it. Yeah. As soon as you get a husband, you're not taking out trash. As soon as you get a husband, there's so many things you don't have to look towards anymore. You're not thinking about anymore. Mm. Yeah. It's almost like true, you have one this with God, where everything is yeah. given to you. It's figured out. You could say you're sick, and, and literally a man will leave at 3 a.m. in the night to go get you medicine. That's how... And, and and even men who don't know God, you know what I'm saying? That's how uh, much a woman garners. You feel me? You will go do. You will do anything to take care of her. Women are taking care of all over this world. You telling me that God has connected you to a physical being that can give you everything and care and shelter you just as He would, but you can't honor Him like God? Bro, sorry, bro. It's something wrong. <laughs> Something wrong there, bro. Anyway. Man, it's, it's, listen, bro, it's a disease, bro. There's, a, there's something in between, you know what I'm saying? The, the spirit, bro. It's the flesh, man. Just, that's what it is. You know, I remember, you know, there was a post I had when I used to have Instagram. And the post was like, the dude, a regular dude called a girl the B word. And she like, don't call me that. And she like, all in his face. This is an illustration, illustration, and then, you know, one of them song singers, Idol, say it, and it's okay. You're singing the song, you're dancing to it and everything, you know. But I guess, I mean, I guess it also can be in context, I guess. I don't know. But, like you said, bro, it's, it's all about um, when it comes to the husband, like, you, it's too much of a fight to hear him in some cases. But you'll hear everybody else or anybody else. When the Most mm-hmm. High has appointed your your teacher, the one that's cleaning you, the one that's bathing you, to be your husband. Now it's not wrong, you know. I mean, the elder women can teach the younger women to love and all these other things. But as you respect that older woman or whoever else it is, how much so your husband? You know, because you got. You know, uh, we can compare this to, to the consensus of comparison to Christ in the church. We got Christ at the top, you know, giving all, you know, instruction and everything. And then he built other people up like a Paul or Peter or John or James. 
uh, and they go out and they be ambassadors and they help the church as well. You know, uh, one of the epistles say that he is giving all these things to make them, you know, to help make a man perfect. So you may, mm-hmm. you got a husband, that's, that's, that's the one thing that's up. And then you have all these other people that are supposed to help you too. You may have somebody on YouTube that knows how to sew, so she's teaching you how to sew because your husband don't. And then you have mm-hmm. an elder woman that has been, you know, married and in the truth for ten years, so she's showing, she's teaching you things of how to be and where her shortcomings were and how you can avoid them. But all these things are to help build you into the perfect person. You can't neglect, you know, a part of it like your husband. Hmm. Hmm. Man, yeah, I feel like that's a hard concept. <sighs> Prayer in the grass, but this is deep, man, but yeah. That's and hard. Crazy. So, just, you know, looking at what Rachel did here, you know, we got, like the book say, all these things are written for our learning. So, you know, in every scripture, it's built for proof and instruction to create the perfect human. You know what I mean? So, you got to look at these things and learn from them and, and see it, you know? Mm-hmm. So I'll pray to most high. Uh you can continue reading unless you got more you want to add. No. And and Laban went into Jacob's tent and into Leah's tent. Hold on. Alright, well. Oh, here I am. Then Jacob was angry and rebuked Laban, and Jacob answered and said, Laban, what is my trespass? What is my sin that you have hotly pursued me. Although you have searched all my things, what part of your household things have you found? Set it here before my brethren and your brethren that they may judge between us both. These 20 years I have been with you. Your ewes and your female goats have not miscarried their young, and I have not eaten the rams of your flock, that which was torn by beasts. I did not bring to you. I bore the loss of it. You required it from my hand, whether stolen by day or stolen by night. There I was. In the day, the drought consumed me, and the frost by night, and my sleep departed from my eyes. Thus I have been in your house 20 years. I served you 14 years for your two daughters, and six years for your flock. And you have changed my ways just ten times. He's saying it again. Mm-hmm. Unless the God of my father and the God of Abraham, um, the fear of Isaac, had been with me, surely now you would have sent me away empty-handed. God mm-hmm. has seen my affliction and the labor of my hands and rebuked you last night. Mm-hmm. And Laban Sweet. and and said to Jacob, these daughters are my daughters, and these children are my children, and this wow. flock is my flock. All that you see is mine. <laughs> oh, well, my boy. Hey, Jerry Springer, for real. But when, <laughs> <laughs> but what can I do this day to these my daughters? or to their children who they have born. Now, therefore, come. Let us make a covenant, you and I, and let it be a witness between you and me. So Jacob took a stone, set it up as a pillar. Then Jacob said to his brethren, gather stones, and they took stones and made a heap. And they ate there on the heap. Laban called it Jagar Sahuda, but Jacob called it Galeed. And Laban said, this heap is a witness between you and me this day. Therefore, it is named, this name was called Gilead. Also, mispass because he said, may the Lord watch between you and me when we are absent one from another. If you afflict my daughters or if you take otherwise beside my daughters, although no man is with us, God is witness between you and me. Then Laban said to Jacob, Here is this heap, and here is this pillar which I have placed between you and me. This heap is a witness, and this pillar is a witness, that I will not pass beyond this heap to you, and you will not pass beyond this heap and pillar to me for harm. 
the God of Abraham and the God of Nahor and the God of their fathers judge between us. And Jacob swore by the father fear of his father Isaac. Then Jacob offered a sacrifice on the mountain and called his brethren to eat. And they ate bread and stayed all night on the mountain. And early in the morning, Laban arose and kissed his sons and daughters and blessed them. Then Laban departed and returned to his place. Oof. Man. I like the fact that they were able to come to a civil rest. And, you know, there was no bloodshed. They were able to eat and separate from one another, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's, that's great, you know what I mean? Because it could have clearly could have ended bad. I really, and I mean, this is a dysfunctional family in my eyes, but <laughs> <laughs> and the 12 tribes are just in the background growing and going through all this craziness. Mm, great point. <laughs> great point. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for listening to another one. Man, we're so excited to be able to go through 31, and Genesis is an amazing book. Being able to see Leah, kind of the things that her and Rachel were doing was really wild, but um, we just thank God that we're able to glean some things and learn and see a perspective through it. So let's pray. Uh, Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much, Elohim. We praise you for who you are. Uh, We thank you for this book. Thank you for the things that we're learning from it. Thank you for the perspectives and the understanding that we get to see. And we thank you for Leah, Abraham, Jacob, everybody that's uh, in this specific chapter and that we're learning through. Uh, we thank you for the faith that they've had. And we also thank you for the mistakes that we get to learn from when we're seeing uh, Rachel sit on things and hide it. So we just thank you that your word can be fun. And, uh, yeah. We love you, Lord. And uh, amen. All right. Shalom, bro. All right. Shalom.